All right, welcome to Obsessed Garage and uh, doing what I do. Man, I can't believe I was thinking about this. Um, let's see, this was 2015 primarily is when I went on the exhaust saga on my 901-1 GT3, and I did all those exhaust changes on the ground, like taking the bumper off on some Harbor Freight jacks and some Rhino ramps. Uh, so uh, I was feeling a little uh, a little lazy here on doing some of the various exhaust modifications because what's on the car now already sounds so great and I realized I got this amazing lift and now I have the news palm lift we'll show you that a little bit here today but the news palm goes up to 78 inches so it goes up over my head which is awesome uh, so this would be the first project that we do on on this lift uh, with um, with the, the the new news palm setup so what I'm intending to do is to uh, try various exhaust variants for the 718 GT4. Uh, I think stock, a car sounds, you know, not so, not so great. It sounds, I think it sounds really good in the car, out of the car, it leaves a lot to be desired. Um, and so the first thing you need to do is remove the particulate filters, the OPF, that, um, that basically creates a secondary cat. And so the first thing we've already done, go check out that video, we did an install of the sole performance over axle pipes, uh, and uh, which just basically eliminates that, that little section there with the, the big old particulate bung. So it removes that section. Uh, so that was step one, the trial, sounds great. Um, step two was to remove the uh, valve operation. So I uh, forced the valves open. All you basically do is turn the car off with the button pressed and then the valves are open and then just yank off the vacuum lines and tuck them up underneath the car somewhere. Uh, and uh, this, the gearing on the 718, uh, the gearing on the 981, so both GT4 variants, is extremely tall. And this valve operation on this car is identical, virtually identical to a GT3. So a GT3 lives above 4,000 RPMs much more often than this car does. This lives below 4,000 RPMs most of your driving experience. And so um, you, you don't want that really boring valve operation. Uh, and so I haven't done it yet, but Soul has a valve operation switch or a uh, valve controller they call it uh, and so over axle pipes then over axle pipes with valves disconnected next trial is race exhaust <laughs> and so the difference is um, this is the over axle section so this will replace the over axles that I put on the car which I'll very likely be putting back on the car after I explode my brain from this um, but the difference is this is a single pipe, whereas there's a Y pipe, we'll show you that on the car, on the over axle for you know, the stock setup. Uh, and so what this does is gives you a single pipe. So from the cat, so header comes to cat, cat then connects to this, uh, forget which end, but one of the ends of this. Uh, and then uh, we're going to take out the big factory muffler with the valves and put on this resonated X-pipe section. Uh, and so you can choose this, it's about 2,500 bucks for this setup. Uh, you can choose this straight so you can get rid of the, um, the resonators if you want, but my guess is the tone would sound a lot better. Uh, so we're gonna try that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put race headers on. So I'm gonna pull the cats out and put you know, the, 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 um, the sole headers with this to really explode my brain then we'll probably very likely end up putting the over axle pipes and I have the very first, I think it's the very first, maybe it's the second uh, sole uh, rear section here. So I'll very likely end up with over axle pipes and the valved sole rear section with a valve controller, uh, with the factory cats and headers, uh, and uh, that's the plan, but uh, why not try it if I can? You know, I have this unique um, life that I live, so why not, um, you know, I got a lift, I've got the car, I've got cameras, we've got great audio equipment, so let's just put them all on and try all the different variants and I'll share it with you and then you can make an educated decision uh, and then I'll probably buy some other, other manufacturers exhausts and do the same thing uh, just to provide uh, myself with that information and uh, I like doing this so why not do it. Okay, so let's get started. 
So first thing we need to do is let's pull off the uh, rear wheels. I don't think I need to take the rear bumper cover off, so I think we can get, it looks like I can just take the diffuser off. I haven't done that yet, so we'll figure out how that goes on. Uh, but I do want to try, um, this is the brand new version of the uh, Milwaukee. This is the mid-torque and this is the compact torque. Uh, I'm still waiting on the half inch version, so this is 3 h this is half inch. I don't think this can break it. I mean, it says it's 250 foot pounds of nut busting torque, so let's see if that works. But let's see if this will break the lugs, which are, which are torqued about 110 foot pounds. I think these are 19 mil. So let's try this one, and then we'll try the, uh, we'll try the, the other guy. But I'm gonna need a, three-eighths to half inch. Gosh, this thing's pretty. I don't want to mess this thing up and get it all greasy. Let's try the, the compact. Let's see if it'll break these comfortably. That's eh, not too bad. I still haven't bought the wheel. I mean, the last video I made when I took the wheels off, people are freaking out. Like I didn't, they like, you need to get some wheel guides. I'm like, I, I have them. I just don't have this thread pitch. I've got a freaking whole box full of them. I just don't, I don't have one for this. And so the, the, the GT or the GT4, it sits on the hub pretty well. So you don't have to really worry about it falling off. Um, wow, that's pretty awesome. Uh oh, broke the end of my, um, let's see how the, uh, how the, the mid torque does. I think this might be the sweet spot. You know, I love the big one, so the big one is this. But I mean, look at the size difference between these. You got the big one, which this one weighs like eight or nine pounds. This one weighs probably five pounds, and then this one is three or four, maybe four pounds. So there's your size difference. This one, I'll show you the difference. I mean, it obviously is going to break loose a you know 100 foot pound lug a lot, a lot easier. I feel like, even though this is way light, so notice this didn't have to work as hard. It is beating up my lug nuts a little bit more versus, just watch how, even though this is a lot heavier, it's nice having the extended anvil so you don't have to put a extension on. That is a lot gentler. I'm banging up my lug bolts. And so you need to be careful with, you know, you guys with carbon ceramics, what you don't want to do is drop the wheel on the one. You don't want to scratch up your beautiful caliper, um, the chip the paint on it like everybody seems to do. But you also don't want to uh, drop it on the $4,000 carbon ceramic that you'd have to replace. But I'm not a freaking baby. I can lift it off the hub without doing that. But you know, in a perfect world, you just put uh, some wheel guides on. They look like this. I just don't have the right. I just have an order. I need to order some. I have the wrong thread pitch, but the wheel guide is this. I don't think these are the right ones. Yeah, that's the wrong pitch. These are, yeah, these are um, M14 by 1.25, I believe. And this is, I think, an M14 by 1.5, the 1.5 thread pitch. I just don't have a set of those, so that's what you would want. I just don't, I've got freaking 15 of them, but I just don't have that size. But we're okay, we made it out alive, we're okay. Okay, I'll take the other wheel off. So here's our, well, while you're here, actually, I'll, I'll, let me take the other wheel off and then I'll um, come back and talk to you about this setup here. Yeah, dude, this thing is freaking awesome. So I think I'll end up using this one more than anything, just get the half inch version instead of the three eighths. Um, I'll have these in the store here shortly. And actually, I, I just uh, talked to Milwaukee about 
uh, they're going to allow me to do uh, in our Civic, uh, actually in our next, our upcoming garage giveaway, I'm going to be doing a garage giveaway starting December 15th, which is in probably when you're watching this video uh, like a week later. Um, but we have a package that will include both of these uh, and you'll get entries into a getting, uh, you know, we're going to give away a garage like I did up in, uh, up in Virginia um, again. So just um, I'm pleased that I'm going to be able to have the new version and you'll get a boatload of entries into, uh, into winning the garage. All right, so the header's here. There's the factory cat. And then what we did is we took off the overaxle pipe with the, there was a big particulate filter right here. And so right now you can see this is the sole overaxle pipe. Now this pipe won't work because of the Y. So there's the Y section uh, that we won't need because we're going to go straight through. We're not going to have any valves uh, because the way the factory exhaust is set up is you have the Y coming off the axle pipe. The top part is if the valves were closed, it routes the exhaust. And the bottom part is if the valves are open, then it can pass through both sides. So I don't really expect this to be considerably louder uh, because the factory exhaust is pretty open, pretty straight through. So. We'll, we'll see how it turns out, but um, it, it just might have some drone. We'll, we'll see. That's what um, that's what John was telling me from from um, Soul that it's not really the exhaust you want to live with every day. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, maybe I'll love it. I don't know. I tend to like aggressive exhaust as long as it doesn't have real. I don't mind a little bit of drone. I just don't like boomy, resonant, annoying drone. Uh, so let's raise the car up a bit and uh, let's start taking this thing apart. I'm going to take the over axle pipes off first Then we're going to figure out we'll start taking off all the underbody stuff, uh, the diffuser. And uh, what we might do is change the oil while we're at it under here as well. Kind of show, show that. Not sure what I'm going to do. So let's get working. Oh, let me show you this lift here. So this is, uh, I just replaced my twin bush. Twin bush is fine. Um, one of the disadvantages of the twin bush, I mean, it's not German quality. It was uh, German engineered and, uh, and Chinese made. This is actually German engineered, USA manufactured. Some of the parts are German manufactured, but this particular lift is the Jumbo 7, or Jumbo Hyperflow 7, uh, HF7. Uh, and so this particular uh, unit doesn't need air. Uh, it has a redundant hydraulic system. Uh, it goes up much faster, goes down about the same speed, uh, but the key is it goes up to 78 inches. I'm what, over my 74 inches tall. So this will go up, go up over my head where the twin bush would only go up 72 inches. So it was two inches below. So I was always crouching down a bit so we can move the car up higher. And uh, this is just, again, German engineered. I had them bring in, start importing the, the ramps. Um, so we're gonna be working on you know, pr providing these. I need to figure out what cap size fits on there. Uh, but we'll be selling these. These are in the OG store. Um, and so uh, we have a video. I have to make another update video on it, but we have a video of showing install and how to set it up. And then notice I have you know, cut the Swiss tracks all around it. And I actually put the ramps on top of the Swiss tracks, which made it a lot easier for cutting and um, actually makes it so that it sits up a little bit taller as well so that you can get more room to fit the, uh, the blocks under. These are from uh, Smokin' GTS, uh, Ed on, um, on Renlist. You can uh, DM Smokin' GTS, but he sells these Delrin um, jack point thingies, jack point pucks, which work, which work awesome for this, this setup here. So let's go up and let's start taking stuff apart. Now you would expect some performance increase in that this is a 208 volt lift uh, and also it's um, eight grand. What is this Kyle, like 79.90 or something like that? Yeah, 79.90 for this lift, whereas the twin bush was 3,900 bucks. I think it's worth every penny, but um, especially as we're gonna have a lot, you know, a lot better support and stuff on it too. Um, but uh, those of you who have twin bush, I, don't, I would certainly wouldn't replace it. Uh, but if you're considering a lift, this is what you want. And notice the scissor lift, and I can get to everything I need to get to. And the beauty of the scissor lift is I can access the car. I think it's so much better than a uh, than a two post. So much safer than a two post as well. 
you don't see any videos and hopefully you never see a video from me with a car you know laying on its side like you do on uh, on two posts all the time all right so i think these are 13s and these freaking guys are amazing this uh let me make sure i got the right size the only disadvantage to this tool i have these in the store as well but is that it's uh it's got a big you know this head is kind of big so it's kind of hard to fit but this will save us a lot of time so obviously i need to save all this hardware because we're going to end up reusing it when we put when we very likely end up putting the over axle pipes back on highly likely i think i'm going to get most of these off with this it's a little tight up top here so if you're not familiar if you're newer here i think i've had 15 different exhaust iterations on my gt3s um, and that's not see we have all these exhaust options now but when they you know when the cars came out no one wanted to build an exhaust they were just taking a 997 you know midsection a bypass and putting it on a 991. it wasn't really until dundon got involved that people really started to step up their game so dundon was the first to really and they're you know really one of the few companies that does a ton of track research on there and testing um, and so that's when I you know I'd, I'd work with several different companies like FED Brombacher and wanted AWE I wanted so sold didn't even exist I don't think at that point yet or they were newer or brand new and really hadn't gotten into the GT3s yet but um, we're so fortunate now and that there's so many great companies supporting these platforms where in the beginning they weren't so i was trying to get somebody to to do it to make something because i just didn't accept the fact that you just take a 997 bypass uh, the, the, like the center section and bypass the center section i thought that we could that there could be something done that was better than that so we're just pulling all this hardware off There's also a gasket that will drop out here, the factory gasket. So make sure to bag all this stuff up and keep it all for the next in case I put this back on. So that's a factory gasket in between. I'm going to lower the car down a little bit so we can get this off of the header. Gosh, having a lift is amazing. For those of you with ceiling height restrictions, they do make a, a mid-rise version of this called the Sprinter. I don't think I'm going to be able to fit this in here on the header. Maybe a couple of them. I just have a wobble extension on here. That's not going to work very well. I don't want to... The header has studs, so I don't want to risk the chance of damaging it so i'm just going to use a socket here or a ratchet so i'm going to do an oil change here i just hit a thousand miles in the car and uh they don't they don't tell you in the manual of course they don't tell you anything about how to do it they don't tell you about what you need and it doesn't even tell you how much oil you need So it takes eight liters of oil. I'm gonna do AMS oil 5W, 5W40. I think a factory fill is OW40, but you know we don't have any temperature restrictions. I don't have any temperature issues with freezing here in Florida. Where the heck did that go? So there's three bolts here on the header. Just 
the weld on there doesn't give me a lot of room to work with. So, pipe should lift out. It's not super easy to get out. Ouch. There's a blood hand. Dang it. All right, so I'm gonna remove the other pipe from the other side and we'll come back to you when we need to get underneath the car here. All right, so both over axle pipes are out. Here's our vacuum lines. I didn't even plug them. I just tucked them, just tucked them up underneath this heat shielding that's up here and then I just pulled them out. So I think uh, it would make logical sense to take the diffuser off, or at least this section of the diffuser because I need to get this out. I can't really see what else needs to come off. So let me just start taking pieces off and we'll see what happens. So these are probably T25s. I'm gonna take one of these diffusers apart, but it doesn't look too complicated. This is the, uh, stubby, the 3.8 stubby with a uh, rubber protector on it. The question is, how do I think this unsnaps? Aha! So it slides out. It's nothing quite like taking apart a Porsche. You know, when I first, when I was younger, I assumed that if I got a Porsche, that I'd, uh, that would be the day I wouldn't be able to work on it myself anymore, but it's just so easy to deal with. All right, so there's two external torques here. So there's this bracket that holds it on. I don't know if there's anything up top though. And there's these two. So I'm thinking it's just these two, looks like. There's a bracket up here. Let me drop it down a little bit. If you don't have one of these line lights, you need to get one. We have them in the store, they're freaking awesome. Yeah, well, I think that's it. I think it's just this and these two 13s. Spinning. So I need to see if I can get one of these little shorties. These little shorties on there. Let's see if those are even attached. Kyle, come help me out. Somebody come help me out. He's about to drop on my head. There. That'll do it. Ouch. Thanks. See if it dropped. Yeah, okay. That was kind of... That's what I needed to get. I thought I needed to get that off, but... Not that heavy. <clears throat> We're gonna need the factory tips. All right, so yeah, you need to. I'm guessing I'm gonna end up taking this whole bracket off. We'll see as we start to fit. But there's the there's the back of the GT4 engine. I guess that's the trans, or is that the diff? So our valves connected up here. So what I'll probably do is 
just tie this up here to this aluminum brace. And just zip tie that up there out of the way. And now I need to figure out how this rear section goes on. So the over axle pipe, this is gonna be this side. Oh, before we get too far ahead, they give us new gaskets. So let's use new, new Porsche gaskets. So these are new gaskets for all the sections. They're all the same. I'd rather save those for when I likely pull this race exhaust back off. So we'll do that. I'm going to use the new hardware. So this is for the exhaust header labeled. New nut and washer. I'm just gonna loosely put one on just to hold this in place. Put one on the top. So see the difference. Same exact thing, just single, single exit. <clears throat> Built for the race exhaust. Make sure you have your gasket on there. I do. So now let's figure out how this rear section goes together. So we got this part. Just trying to figure out where does it what does it bolt to? I think it's gonna reuse those. think or actually is it going to go up like this it would make logical sense since that's the way the yeah it's going to go up in like that I think I don't like my mess I've got going on here so these guys are going to go here has tips coming out, but I don't think they've released them yet. And then this, this coupler, yeah, that's how it goes. And this is gonna be pretty gnarly, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so let's loose fit. gaskets and hardware here oh sweet they give you some plugs they give you this plug for our valves nice I don't know man I, I might end up liking this exhaust we'll see how droney it is but I think this might actually turn out pretty sick No valves, no controllers, just aggression. <clears throat> so we're doing a washer on both sides.
stainless washer, but zinc, zinc bolts. We'll have to pull this all together and get it all, all lined. Man, this is fun. Glad I decided to do this little project, test out all these different variants. So I'm thinking a smart thing to do is gonna be to bolt it to the header first. And then come back here and work my way from header back to align it up. on so let me lower it down I'm gonna tighten the over axle pipes first I think and then we'll come back here and tweak everything because I don't think yeah, if I line those flanges up there's not really any play so there's three bolts from header flange to Over axle flange. Okay, it's all good. Now let's go back up. Let's center it up. So I think we should put our tips on. Probably have to push our heat shield out of the way a little bit here. It's a little benderoo on there. Never hurt anybody. We're gonna reuse. I don't like these tips, so we gotta find something better. But for now, we gotta reuse these. Like officer, I have factory exhaust tips. Look. Ignore the fact that it's a uh, 190 dB. Yeah, so it drops down. Let's give it a little initial tighten so they're not drooping. So I can get it lined up. Even though it's a little more annoying to tighten it up like that, I like it so I don't see the bolts hanging down. bit and I think we want a nice little gap there so you want to maintain I don't think we want this bracket hitting the other bracket so you want to keep a quarter inch or so Sure, the exhaust looks better. There's like less going on than the factory one. Turn these up and opposite. Push the heat shield up so it's not touching. Nice. So we got it pretty well aligned there. I don't think we can torque it down. I mean, obviously that one needs to go up a little bit, but this. I think we want them level. So let me tighten it down just a little bit and then we'll put the tips on and align it up and then I'll go and cinch everything down. It'll also be good news that I thought I was going to take the bumper cover off every time I redid all this. Say that's the correct side. So before I line the tips up, I think I want to tighten all this other stuff down because we'll have to move those around. So let me tighten these first. I keep forgetting I have that little set of tools on the tool grid set aside. 
for when we do the, the garage giveaway. So I'm tightening down the flange bolts here. The bolts that Connecting the side of the side or over axle pipes to the rear section. She's lifting up nice and tightly. Nice. Same thing here. I got this pushed all the way back. These two back in, adding weight back to the car. I hate these tips. All we have to do is plug our lines and tie them up. Uh oh. Look at that, teaching Bryce how to be a salesman. This is good. Hang around me a little while and... All right, so let's put the plugs in. Put these in. That's pretty nifty. They send you these little... How does that work? How do I get it to stay? That's the question. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just tape it on there because I wanna be able to get this back off easily yeah it's not super critical here so when all you porsche guys get all worried about this this is probably the first first time i've ever actually plugged the lines only i just leave it these are just vacuum lines they're not some secret fancy computerized system it's just a vacuum line Really changed color, didn't it? <sighs> yep. Like, Whoa. Get her off the heat shield. Yep, like that. And we'll zip time in the middle here. It's right here. Over like this. Yeah. I have to have them go in like the same orientation. Oh, yeah. yeah. There we go. Looks pretty enough. Let me wipe it down. Put the diffuser back on. Wipe all my fingerprints off with the handy dandy little towel that they provide. A little WD-40. Getting all my grubby fingerprints off. Because you see this will change color. And when it does, you don't want your fingerprints all over it. We'll change the oil some other day. We don't need to take this diffuser off anyway, I don't think. Typical Porsche fashion, everything lines back up nicely. I don't know how long I'll drive around with it. I guess it'll determine how droney and annoying it is, but I think it's gonna be pretty good. We're out to find out. Let's check out this guy. This is the new Sonic double-sided impact. So I've got it on backwards. 110-ish. Love it. This is a nice looking little combo here of So this is the 60 to 300 newton meter version. It's like the perfect length. I 
I like the uh, his click style much more than the than the digital ones. I feel like the digital ones, like the Snap-on ones I had, were always out of battery. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands. We'll see what it sounds like. Dang it. Keep opening that drawer. All right, moment of truth. So we'll uh, we'll be sure to grab um, some flyby pay some flyby. Uh, God dang it, take two. All right, so we'll be sure to grab some flybys of the car exterior, and uh, maybe we'll do a couple little runs up the street here. But um, uh, we'll go do a full extensive interior exterior of the car. Um, then I'm gonna go drive it around and see how it does, and be sure to update you on how it how it um, how it sounds. But from a fit, finish, install, I mean, you saw pretty seamless, pretty easy. So anyway, thanks for watching. Oil change video will be coming up soon. I'll do a full write up on Renlist as well on that with photos and everything. And uh, uh, we'll have more iterations of this exhaust as well. So thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoy this exhaust saga on the GT4. We'll get it done. See you soon. <laughs>